ZNBC Radio 4. The time is 09.15. It is now time for our Policy Monitoring and Research Center radio program for today, Thursday, 20th December 2018. I am your host. My name is Kachana Sinyani. And I have live in studio my guest from PMRC, that's Mr. Kasoma Albert, a senior researcher. Hey, Albert, good morning. Uh, good morning, Kachana. Compliments of the season. Oh, thanks. Same to you. And uh, good morning, listeners. Thank you. Um, welcome to uh, the program. Thank you. I hope PMRC is doing well. Oh, uh, yes. PMRC <laughs> is doing very well. All right. Um, so we are indeed um, looking at reflections on the implementation of the Electronic Farmer Input Support Program. Yes, please. Uh, FISP in the agriculture sector. Now, uh, kindly briefly just uh, give us the background of our Farmer Input Support Program, FISP in short. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Kachana, for, for that question. Uh, but uh, before maybe I give the background of uh, the Farmer Input Support Program, mm -hmm. it's important really to, to understand why uh, the government and uh, many other governments world over decide to to provide farmer input support program mm -hmm. or in other words subsidies yeah. so one of the reasons i think uh, why uh, subsidies are common uh, world over is the fact that uh, governments intend to to some extent uh, supplement uh, farmer incomes uh, they are also they also have intentions of trying to to manage the supply of uh, essential agricultural commodities uh, in our case uh, we have uh, maize, which is our step, uh, staple crop. Uh, then governments also, uh, of course, uh, provide subsidies because they, they want to influence the cost and supply uh, structure of essential commodities. Uh, you may wish to understand that uh, the agriculture sector in Zambia employs about 70% um, uh, of, of the labor force, but uh, contributes very uh, minimal amount to the national income or rather uh, the GDP. So uh, any effort by government to try to, to supplement income, of course, is, uh, is the right step. Uh, you may also wish to understand that uh, the, the productivity issues in the agriculture sector uh, are very low. So uh, the provision of farmer support uh, uh, inputs uh, try to, to cushion and uh, improve uh, uh, the productivity levels by the provision of uh, uh, fertilizer and uh, and other inputs such as uh, improved varieties of, of seeds. So uh, it is justified, of course, that the uh, governments uh, world over and Zambia specifically intervenes uh, in the market. So just to to give a, a brief background of how the farmer input support program started, uh, the period between 1964 to about 1990, uh, the government was providing uh, uh, the farmer input support uh, 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 inputs through the NAMBOT, the, the National Agriculture Marketing Board. And um, when uh, we changed uh, the, go the, the governance system in 1991, uh, I think uh, the IMF came, came, came in and uh, uh, NAMBOD was disbanded, was privatized, and uh, the, the, the FISIP, the Farmer Input Support Program, was actually discontinued. Um, later, I think in about 1997, the then president, uh, Frederick Chilub, I think, uh, did try to introduce again some form of uh, support to the farmers, which was called uh, the Fertilizer Credit Program. Uh, large scale uh, farmer input support program was uh, reintroduced, I think, in, uh, in the Fourth Le uh, Republic, uh, led, then led by uh, the late President uh, Mwana Osa from the year 2002 to, to date. So for the last uh, 16 years, uh, the Zambian government has been providing uh, support to, to small-scale farmers. Uh, but of course, uh, this support has not been without uh, problems. Uh, we had issues to do with uh, delay in the delivery of farmer inputs. There was issues to do with uh, the costly implementation due to transportation and uh, procurement costs. There was issues to do with poor targeting of farmers. 
as as I think as we go on and discuss uh, in the program, we will see the numbers actually that were removed from from the program as being ghost farmers. There was also an issue of um, which has which is still going on the failure to, uh, for farmers to to graduate on this program, and uh, by and large, I think the program uh, has not really helped to to improve uh, the small scale farmer maize production and income levels. All so right. In a nutshell, yeah, that's the background. Wow, it does come from a long way, actually. Yes, please. <laughs> All right, our dear listener, if you're just coming on board, if you're just joining us, I'm still with uh, Mr. Albert Chanda Kasoma from PMRC. He's a senior researcher, and we are looking at, uh, you know, uh, we are just the reflections on the implementation of uh, the Electronic Farmer Input Supporter Program, or EIFSP. Okay, FISP, I beg your pardon, in the ag- ag- agriculture sector. Now, uh, you did mention that uh, um, there have been some, you know, uh, sorts of uh, maybe challenges or drawbacks. Uh, one of them you mentioned is uh, delays in farmers, you know, getting what they need. Apart from that, what are some of the, you know, the benefits, of course, uh, and challenges as well, if uh, any, you know, of the e voucher, okay, or E-FISP? Okay, yeah, uh, like I earlier mentioned, because of those challenges, I think... Um uh, during uh, the government uh, uh, decided to, to introduce the, the electronic farmer input support program after being piloted for two successive uh, seasons. So some of the benefits, of course, uh, have been um, the reduction uh, in the cost of uh, transporting inputs to the various parts of the country, uh, of course, the reduced cost of administration, as well as uh, tendering processes and other related uh, Cost. You may wish to note that uh, uh, the farmer support input program, as well as uh, uh, the 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 monies that are given to FRA, constitute uh, constitute about um, fifty one percent of the total agriculture right. budget. So uh, the the other benefit of uh, actually of the introduction of the e of the e voucher has been um, the improved. Uh, targeting of beneficiaries, like uh, like I'd earlier stated, uh, when this program was introduced, uh, the government was able to get rid of about twenty thousand ghost farmers. Some of these were 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 civil servants, and uh, yeah, of course. So if if you multiply twenty thousand uh, farmers by the government subsidy, which is about one thousand seven hundred, you're talking about a cost saving of close to about thirty four million. Wow. which is a, a very huge amount. It is. Um, another benefit uh, uh, that has come with uh, the electronic FISIP, the electronic uh, farmer input support program, e-voucher, has been the promotion of the private, uh, the private sector participation. So the program has been able to crowd in about 5,800 agro-dealers, wow. which is, uh, I think, a, a positive step. Yeah. Uh, the program also comes with uh, the improved monitoring. Uh, so there's just a single platform where all the stakeholders and uh, drawbacks, if any. Uh, research that have been conducted also indicate that uh, uh, the program has also enhanced uh, the adoption of uh, climate smart agriculture. Uh, climate smart agriculture, talking about uh, strategies or agricultural practices that bring about adaptation uh, in trying in trying to mitigate um, uh, the effects of uh, climate change, so agro dealers were trained actually to advise farmers on uh, various uh, climate smart agriculture inputs and seed varieties that were resistant probably to to drought. Uh, there's also been um, enhanced uh, diversi- uh, diversification in the agriculture sector. Uh, so diversification, of course, uh, is something that all the stakeholders have been talking about. By and large, you've seen that uh, we've relied so much on uh, a monocrop maize. So the coming in of EFISIP, uh, farmers have the liberty to pick different inputs from uh, the livestock, uh, fisheries, and uh, other seed varieties apart from, from maize. Uh, there's also been, I think, job creation. Uh, the parliamentary uh, speech that the president gave, he indicated that that uh, about 23,000 jobs were created through the implementation of the electronic um, FISIP. So 23,000 jobs. Uh, if you divide by the 5,800 agro-dealers who are crowded in into the sector, we have r- roughly about, I think, four employees 
uh, being employed by the agro dealer that joined uh, the sector. Then um, the other benefit has been the fact that uh, there's been enhanced financial inclusion. So the uh, farmers have been linked to banking services through their their, their deposits. Then uh, let me just quickly just uh, run through some of the few challenges I think that were encountered uh, when the e-voucher was implemented in the last uh, farming season. We had issues to do with uh, long distances to the nearest agro-dealer. There were issues to do with uh, lack of internet connectivity. You know that not all parts of the country are connected to, to, to the cell phone network and the internet. Uh, lack of presence of delayed Bank. responses, uh, late government uh, funding, and uh, uh, delayed uh, response to, to queries because uh, banks had centralized, I think, the provision of these services. Uh, the, the overall infrastructure was basically not ready for, for the 100% rollout to the, the, the entire country because we had uh, issues of... Um, the Zamis platform system managed by Smart Zambia, probably sometimes having system crashes and being slow, uh, which led to, of course, incomplete information because some, some people are doing farmer registration didn't have the necessary uh, technology or equipment really to, to, do, to do the registration. Then uh, there were also issues of some farmers losing PIN cards, I mean, mi losing their cards and uh, their PIN numbers. Uh, um, among us, uh, many other challenges. All right, thank you so much. I'm still talking to Mr. Chanda Albert Kazoma, Senior Researcher from Policy Monitoring and Research Center on today's PMRC Radio Corner. I am still your host. My name is Kachana Sinyani. We are looking at the reflections on the implementation of the Electronic Farmer Input Support Program, e FISP, in the agriculture sector. Now, what is the outlook for the 2018-2019 e-voucher implementation? Okay, uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, so before I give probably uh, the outlook as that of uh, November 2018, uh, because of those challenges I think I earlier mentioned, so the government decided to vary uh, the implementation of the e-voucher uh, in the 2018-2019 farming season. So we have seen some districts actually being taken back or reverted to the traditional uh, actual delivery of uh, inputs. Uh, amounting to about um, 54. Then the other 61 will still be on um, on the electronic FISIP. I think uh, the, the, um, the contribution by farmers remained the same. It's, it's 400. Then governments, uh, no, it has still remained the same. It's about 1,700. So the total will be, uh, the total re redeemable will be 2,100. Two then 100 quarter I think, goes to uh, the we weather insurance index. Uh, the banks, uh, uh, there have been an increase. Uh, we have, I think we have more banks this time around. Uh, the, the, there are seven in total. There's Barclays Bank, Zanaco, Eco Bank, UBA Bank, uh, Natsev, uh, Indo, uh, uh, Atrasmala, two non-financial institutions, uh, Paycode and Mobile Payment Solutions. Uh, so when we come to the outlook, uh in the in the implementation of the the EFSIP, uh for the 2018 2019 farming season uh the outlook i think looks a bit uh uh, uh good uh, because i think uh, as out of uh, this month uh somewhere around the 10th i think we had uh, a statement from the ministry that indicated that uh over 850,000 farmers so far have redeemed their electronic voucher. They've redeemed their 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 inputs. So, if you look at this figure, it's double the number uh, that had redeemed inputs uh, uh, last year. So, I think uh, we are on the right step. Uh, last week, our relatives uh, based in Lufanyama farmers, they they also actually confirmed that uh, they had started redeeming their inputs. Okay. All right, as we get towards the close of our show, um, I'd like to find out uh, what some of the recommendations, you know, uh, can, what, what are they, you know, that the government can actually, um, you know, regarding uh, the implementation of the EFISB. What are some of uh, the recommendations that you can actually, you know, give as PMRC to the government? Yep. Uh, 
when it comes to to the recommendations uh we 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 did uh, carry out some uh, research um uh, early this year uh to really look at the implementation of the voucher and uh, we've done a research report uh and I would age our listeners actually to to check um uh to check out to check our our website uh, uh and look out for 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 those research reports and uh we have indicated some of the recommendations to the government and uh we did actually at, at a briefing after carrying out the research and we gave the recommendations to government then but people can still access them uh for successful implementation of the e vouch i think uh we actually indicated to government that there's need actually to to enhance uh, the agro dealer capacity especially in rural areas uh where the uh, agro dealers in those areas were unable to stock enough inputs for the farmers so uh, there's a possibility that the government can link uh such uh farmers to sources of i mean agro dealers to sources of of credit um we also urged government uh, to ensure that all financial institution institutions integrate with uh, the zamis platform to ensure data harmonization and system compatibility uh pmrc i think also encouraged government uh to ensure that all the participating financial institutions uh, decentralize their services okay. there are, there are times when uh, queries were referred to to lusaka uh which actually delayed uh, the process of having cards um activated uh we, uh, we encourage stakeholders government included in the agriculture mm-hmm. sector to enhance efforts to sensitize farmers on the implementation as well as uh other key players uh to ensure that they are up to date with uh, the current uh, procedures are needed actually to to redeem for farmers to redeem uh, inputs uh our research actually indicated that most of the farmers uh were unaware of uh, the hundred quarter which was going to the weather insurance index um we also urge government actually to decentralize some functions in the in the efficiency uh, procedure such as uh, the selection of agro dealers uh government was also urged to really uh, improve on its um uh disbursement of funds from the treasury to ensure that uh, the program commences on time and all farmers are able to redeem their their inputs on time uh early commencement is actually very key and uh we also uh implored government to come up with an exit strategy because you know when uh, the the fiscal program was introduced in the in the year 2002 the intention was that farmers were were supposed to graduate after 2 years so now we have farmers being on the program perpetually <laughs> so <laughs> so it's important uh, that uh, there's an exit strategy formulated so that maybe after 5 years or 3 years people should be able to graduate then you you bring on board uh, new people okay. because uh, i think the target for the government is 1 million but we have more than 1 million uh, small scale farmers in the country so some people should be able to graduate so that we can bring in uh, uh some other farmers then uh because like i earlier mentioned now uh, the government varied the way uh the fisip is being implemented in this farming season so we have two modes we have the traditional with physical delivery of inputs then the the fisip of course uh using electronic vouchers so we 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 have actually urged government to continue uh, reviewing the districts that have been reverted back to the to the to, to the tradition of fisip because we understand that some of these dis- districts have got um enhanced capacity in terms of uh agro dealers okay so there is need that uh we continue reviewing them so that they can be taken back to electronic voucher because of the associated uh, treasury All right, unless otherwise there's something else you'd like our listeners to know of um otherwise we're getting to the end of our show now. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I would I would like just to to urge our listeners to to visit our website uh which is www.pmrczambia.com. There are various publications 
uh, that have been placed there and uh, some publications are actually uh, going to be published uh, between now and January. And uh, you can contact us physically on uh, Plot 36C, uh, Sebolo, uh, Sebo Road, Kabulonga. All right. Thank you so much for making an appearance on today's show. We hope to be with you next week again at the same time on the same day. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. All right. Um, have a good uh, season as we indeed slowly get into the next year. Hope to see you next year as well. Thank you. All right. thank you very You're much. welcome. To our dear listeners, thank you so much for having been around, for being a part of the show. This has been today's Policy Monitoring and Research for your corner. I have been talking to Mr. Kaso Kasoma Albert, Senior Researcher from PMRC. We have been uh, looking at the reflections on the implementation of the Electronic Farmer Input Support Program, E. FISB in the agriculture sector. I have been your host. My name is Kachana Sinyani. Do make a date again with us next week for yet another program. For now, we are done. Good morning. Keep listening to Radio 4, your public service broadcaster. Mm-hmm.